Hey guys, Jesse here again with Maxon and Cinema 4D. Uh, we're continuing to talk about all the new features and updates in this latest release, R16. And uh, today I want to go over the non-destructive bevel. So beveling's been around for a while, but it hasn't always been very powerful. Um, in the last release, R15, uh, Maxon completely reinvented the beveling tool. In R16, they, they went one step further with that, and they actually made it non-destructive now, which means we can preserve um, all of our models. We don't actually have to bake them down anymore. We can apply the bevel deformer right to any of our objects, even you know text and, and things like that, and we can alter the bevel uh, right within the built-in parameters. So after exploring the non-destructive bevel deformer, um, for a little bit, I was applying it to primitives to see, you know, kind of what results I could get pretty quickly. And uh, I was I was pretty amazed that, you know, you can start with just a cube object and apply uh, a few bevel deformers to it. And all of a sudden you have something completely different. And then I can turn off all of those deformers and I'm back down to the main primitive. And in the objects property, I can still uh, resize everything and you know nothing was baked nothing was collapsed or created editable here in this example I actually created this weight just by creating a tube applying bevel deformers to it and you know we get something uh, recognizable like this uh, simple weight so I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, how I created this and then uh, you know I'll, show, I'll, I'll apply the bevel deformer to some text and uh, a different uh, geometry and see what we get. All right, so I have Cinema 4D R16 already open and uh, I already dropped in a tube here. I just went up to uh, you know the objects here, dropped in this tube. And from here, what I wanna do is just start adding bevel deformers to it and see what kind of results we get. So the bevel deformer is you know right within the deformers just like in R15. You can drop it in, throw it under the tube, and already we're seeing a little bit of bevel going on here. So with the bevel deformer selected uh, in the attributes manager, if we go down to options, we uh, have a few different options here. So currently our component mode is set to edges and you're seeing, you're seeing a little deformation here. And if we change that to say polygons, you know, it's it's going to deform all of the polygons rather than just the edges. So what we can do actually is uh, we can increase the subdivisions here and you can see it adds in uh, more subdivisions to our uh, bevel here. And by increasing the subdivisions, we can also off, uh, you know, we can offset this here a little bit and we're getting kind of a, a nice rounding result and um, we can kind of play with the depth here too. It, it's really kind of a trial and error type process and you can really get some interesting results here. Like if I go ahead and flip this on 90 degrees, we're starting to get a nice little table or something going on with this bevel here. Which is kind of nice, um, and that you know we've we've just been playing around with this for a minute here uh, under the options tab. So I'm going to spin this back around, and I'm going to take this back down to all the original values here. Keep this to one. All right. So in terms of creating that weight um, that I created, I'll go over to the polygon extrusion, and all I really did was I brought this extrusion into the negative value, there we go. And you can see, uh, if you do go to the gym or you're familiar with uh, these kind of weights, you know, we have this inner ring here and the outer ring creating a nice extrusion and then you can go ahead, I've already created the text here. Um, you know, we get something pretty recognizable really quickly and uh, you know, we can continue if, if we don't preserve the groups, we're gonna get some, some weird uh, things going on, but you know, you may find a need for that. So it's always good to know it's there. Let's go over to the shaping tab here. Currently it's set to round, 
um, I can pull this down and, and you'll see we're going to get some, some really interesting results as well. But what we can do is we can also change this to user. And all of a sudden we have these curves now that we can uh, toggle and kind of create our custom uh, curves here. So if we start to pull these around and, you know, we can, we can see immediately we're getting a nice dip in the middle here. It's a really nice curve going on all the way throughout. So, you know, you can play around with this, have some fun and, and figure out, you know, what is going to uh, work for you. We can also pull this down depending on how deep we want it to go. And then if I toggle this back to round, you can see we're going to get a completely different result. So you can see that the bevel deformer is completely revamped uh, from the ground up, and it's so nice that it's non-destructive. Um, you know, so that all we have to do is, if we turn this off, we're back to our tube, and we can go ahead and change the inner radius, the outer radius. Nothing's baked. I didn't have to go over here and make anything editable in order for this to work, which is great. So from here, what we can do is we can continue to add some bevels. So if I just go up here to uh, the deformers again and choose bevel, all I have to do is kind of drag this right under the tube. Now make sure you don't make it a child of uh, the bevel or it's not going to work. Um, it needs to be right right within it. So already you see some, some weird things happening here. And it also depends on the way you stack it. So if I bring it underneath, you're going to see that kind of disappears and we're getting more of a result. If I turn this off, you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, and that is because we have edges turned on in the component mode. So that's actually kind of a cool little um, result there. But what, what we can do is if we change it to polygon, you're going to see a much different um, result here. And it's, it's really kind of interesting, you know, as you keep applying things. Um, it just keeps getting better and better. So I think at this point we've completely surpassed the uh, the weight that we were going for. I think we we reached it and then we went just kind of crazy. So let's just continue going a little crazy because I'm I'm really liking the way that this is coming out. Uh, so I'm gonna hide the text because it doesn't really make sense anymore. It's more like a a weird table, like a bar table. Um, so I'm just I'm winging it now. Uh, I'm totally not scripted here. Um, so let's see. So we have this bevel going on here. And um, if we go ahead and duplicate this again and drop it down, let's see what we get. There we go. So even more craziness going on. Really intense beveling. Um, really awesome, actually. So I'm going to take this one step further now. I'm going to turn off these two bevels here. And in the tube, actually, I'm going to turn them all off. In the tube, uh, I want to add some uh, 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 cap segments, right? So now if I make this editable and go into the polygon mode, I'm just going to select this ring right here, and I'm going to set a selection to it. So now a, ta a selection tag has been created. So if we go back into um, our model mode and turn on the bevel here, what we can do now, there's a, a selection uh, field here, and we can go ahead and drag in our selection. So now you see the bevel is only um, affecting this selection here, which is really interesting. And, you know, we can change the depth of it. Um, we can figure out how many subdivisions we need. We can offset it just like we were before, but now it's only applying it to that selection. And if we turn these on, all the deformers underneath it are going to stack accordingly, which is very, very cool. This is funny. I, you know, I sat down and I thought I was going to uh, show you guys how to model a weight from the gym or something today uh, using this bevel deformer, which we did. But then we went like a million times further, uh, which I love. You know, this is why this stuff is so interesting and so exciting. So... I'm not really sure what's going to happen next, uh, so we're kind of in this together now. Um, so we have this, this pretty cool shape here, right? And what I'm thinking we can do, uh, we have this, this nice little 
uh, inlet here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn all this, this off and then I'm gonna rotate this back to zero. So we kind of have this flat surface. And what I'm thinking is, let's test out dynamics and see how it uh, interacts with the bevel deformer. So let's just turn this first bevel on, right? So now we're getting this, um, this, this shape again. And I'm gonna drop in a sphere, right? It's way down here, I'll bring it up. Make it a little bit smaller. I guess the theme of all these tutorials I've been making for the second series is uh, drop in some spheres and dynamics after we, we uh, show the example. So uh, let's throw it into a cloner object and uh, let's make it a grid array. And I think two by two by two should do it. I'm assuming, let's make the spheres a little bit smaller so they can actually drop into there. Hopefully they'll drop into there and um, interact with it properly. All right, so now what we want to do is uh, throw in a simulation tag. So a rigid body on that, and then a rigid body on the tube itself. But what we want to do is, like anything else, we want to make this a static mesh so that it collides. Uh, it's, it is the collider. And then our cloner object, we want to make it um, all individual elements so that hopefully these spheres will drop independently inside of this crevice here. So let's go ahead and play this um, and see. Ah, perfect. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So let's pause that and let's turn on these other uh, bevels here. All right, that's that's really cool. So in order to, uh, this last bevel is a little bit thick. So we just have to uh, run another simulation on that. But that is really cool. So we, uh, we took this tube as a primitive and we added uh, three layers of bevels and then we, we threw in uh, a rigid body dynamics on it that interacts with it and if we disable all, all of the bevels we're back down to our original uh, primitive. All right, and I think the last thing I wanna do is um, show you how to actually animate some of these parameters within the bevel deformer. So uh, let's go ahead and, so all my bevels are back on and if I run this sim here, ha, it's kind of like a hole in one there. Sweet. Um, they don't actually fit anymore. So if I turn the last deformer off, there we go. They're all in there. So what we can do is uh, in this first bevel here, let me turn this one off so you can see, uh, in the depth, we have 157%, right? So let's say at frame 20, we want it to be 157%. We want it to be right there. At zero, let's kind of pull this all the way down. There we go. Cool. So all these parameters, as you can see, if you've used Cinema 4D before, um, you know, anything that, that has this little keyframe next to it is uh, has the ability to be animated. So. Uh, we're animating the depth parameter here under our first bevel, and let's see how that plays out. Perfect. So it actually animates right before our spheres get sucked in, which is pretty cool. And then let's go ahead and turn on the second bevel deformer, and let's see if that plays back to be a little bit slower, right? Because we're we have a lot of um, deformers going on in the scene. But there it is. Works perfectly. So that is just about going to do it uh, for this tutorial where we went over the non-destructive bevel deformer in the new R16. Um, it's your job now to take what we went over today and make something even more awesome. Uh, add in some materials, some lighting, a whole scene, animate this thing, throw in some uh, rigid body dynamics, and uh, see what you can come up with. Be sure to check out the other tutorials in this series where I go over the entirely new motion tracker never before seen in previous versions of Cinema 4D. I'm gonna show you how I tracked in 3D objects to a scene that I shot on my iPhone. 
the all new Cineware 2.0 where I go over all the updated features including the default layer, automatic synchronization, the region of interest, collecting all of your files, the updated cogwheel feature which has all new parameters where you can make your own custom gears and cogwheels. Completely revamped content browser where I go through all the new objects for motion graphics artists from gift boxes to kitchenware, customizable infographics, high quality sports package, a completely rigged book with flipping pages, title sequence fly through setups and uh, so many more. One of the biggest updates to R16, which is the Reflectance channel, I'm going to show you how I build a custom reflective material from scratch and apply it to a watch that I modeled. Thank you and I'll see you then.